Okay, this is it, our last lesson for the topic of functions. In this lesson, we're going to look at combined and composite functions. So far, we've covered what functions are and their notation, linear and quadratic functions, nonlinear functions, including absolute value functions and hyperbolas, and circles and semicircles. So let's start with combined functions. They are formed by adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing existing functions. So suppose we have f of x is equal to x plus 1, and g of x is equal to x minus 1. Describe the graph of f of x plus g of x. All we're going to do here is substitute in. So we get x plus 1 plus x minus 1, which is 2x. And this, of course, is a straight line. It's a linear function, y equals 2x. How about f of x minus g of x? Now be careful when substituting in here because we've got two terms, we need to put that in brackets. So we end up with x plus 1 take away x plus 1. And those x's will cancel out and we end up with 2. We end up with y is equal to 2. Again, it's a straight line, but it's a horizontal line. What about when we multiply? We're going to put both of them in brackets and do FOIL. We will end up with x squared take away 1, which is a parabola. And then finally, division. We have x plus 1 over x minus 1. And this x on the bottom is telling us that this is going to be a hyperbola. Now let's look at those same functions again and describe the effect on the domain and range. So our first one was f of x plus g of x is equal to 2x. And we said that that is a straight line. It goes through 0, 0, and it has a gradient of 2. Now, most straight lines have a domain of all real x, and this one is no different, so it goes from negative infinity up to positive infinity, and most of them have a range of negative infinity up to positive infinity as well, and that's the case here. With B, we had the line y is equal to 2, and it has the same domain, all real x, or negative infinity to positive infinity, but the range is different. The range in this case is only one number, y is equal to 2. And c was the multiplication of f of x and g of x, and that gave us a parabola x squared minus 1. If we take our normal parabola, y equals x squared, and shift it down 1. So its vertex is going to be here at 0, negative 1. Now with Parabolas, the domain is all real x, so negative infinity up to positive infinity. But the range is everything above and including negative 1. So we want a square bracket, negative 1 up to infinity. And this one, which is a hyperbola. Now the format's a bit different here because of the x on the numerator. And there are a couple of different ways to do this question. None of them are particularly easy, and that's a little bit beyond the course, but we're going to persevere with it. We can easily see what the vertical asymptote is because we can't have a denominator of zero. So x cannot equal one. Now what about the horizontal asymptote? Let's start by making y equal to x plus one over x minus one. And we're just gonna do some algebra and try and switch it around to make x the subject. We need to do a bit of work, but it won't hurt us. I'm going to get the x's together on the left hand side, factorise and then x is going to be equal to y plus 1 over y minus 1. Okay, what is the horizontal asymptote? Can you see y cannot equal 1, so they're actually the same. So our domain is everything except for x equals 1, and our range is everything except for y is equal to 1. Okay, this is our last concept that we need to learn for this topic. A composite function is a function inside another function. Now, where we were doing combined functions, we were adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing them, but this is different. This is where we take a function and we put it inside another one. This is what we write f of g of x, f of g of x, or like this. Some of my students like to call these fog functions. You can probably see why. 
Now, in this case, the output of g of x becomes the input of f of x. Now, if that confuses you a little bit, just let that go for the moment. You'll understand that in a minute. Here's an example. If f of x is equal to x squared and g of x is equal to x plus 1, find f of g of x. Now, before we do that question, let's just remind ourselves what this means. Suppose we have f of x is equal to x squared plus x plus 1. And I ask you to find f of 1. We're going to substitute the 1 everywhere we see an x, like this. OK, now it's exactly the same here. We're going to take our g of x and substitute it everywhere we see an x. So f of g of x is just going to be equal to x plus 1 all squared. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Here's another example. If f of x is equal to x cubed and g of x is equal to x minus 1, find f of g of 3. Now you can work out f of g of x and then substitute the 3 in. Or you can do it in two parts, which I'm going to do. I'm going to start by working out g of 3. So substituting the 3 in here, I get 3 take away 1, which is 2. Now I'll take the output of this function and substitute it in here. So you can see how the output of the inner function becomes the input of the outer function. That's what I was talking about before. So we want to work out f of 2. Substitute your 2 in here. 2 cubed is 8. How about this one, g of f of negative 3? So start by working this one out, f of negative 3. Substituting it in, don't forget your brackets. Negative 3 or cubed is negative 27. Now substitute the negative 27 into the g of x. Now I prefer this notation, but it's up to you. So g of f of negative 3 is going to be the same as substituting my negative 27 in here, which is negative 27, take away 1 which is negative 28. That's our answer. Here's example two. Sketch the following and state the domain and range. f of x is equal to 1 take away x squared. So we've got a parabola here. It's concave down. We can tell that because we have a negative x squared. And we're going to move this up 1. So it's going to look like this. And the vertex there is 0, 1. Now, parabolas have a domain of all real x, and that's no different here. So it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. But our range is everything below and including 1. So it goes from negative infinity up to 1. How about g of x is equal to the square root of x? This one's actually a sideways parabola. Looks like that. Let's have a look at why that is. y is equal to the square root of x. Square both sides. x is equal to y squared. Now compare that with y is equal to x squared. Can you see the similarity? Something equals something squared, but the x's and y's have switched around. That's going to make it sideways. But furthermore, we only have the positive square root. So that's why it's only in the positive quadrant up here. Our domain is everything above 0, so 0 up to infinity. And so is our range, actually. How about the composite function, g of f of x? Remember, we're going to take f of x and substitute it inside g of x. And so we're going to get the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, what's the domain and range of this function? What is it, even? It's a semicircle. Do you remember that? We did this last lesson. It's the positive semicircle. It goes between negative 1 and 1, and up here, y is equal to 1. So our domain is everything from negative 1 up to 1, including both of those values. And the range is? everything from 0 up to 1, including both of those values. Now, if you're asked to work out the domain and range of a composite function, I would encourage you to do it from this point here. Don't try and do it from here and here. It's too complicated. 
So work out the function and then look at the domain and range. Question to finish off. Is f of g of x the same as g of f of x? You probably already thought about this. No, it's not. But is it ever? Can you think of a pair of functions where putting b inside a is the same as putting a inside b? I'm going to leave you to think about that one. Okay, that's it. Longest topic ever. Our next topic is trigonometry.